The Packers have done nothing but disappoint for the last decade. They've made the NFC Championship four times, but they've lost every single one. Aaron Rodgers is still Aaron Rodgers, and he's even won back-to-back -back MVPs, though. Green Bay has won 13 games for the last three seasons, but nothing to show for it. And unfortunately, the Packers got worse this offseason. That's what happens when you trade away one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Nikhil Harry. <laughs> no, my bad. Devontae Adams. The Packers and Devontae Adams couldn't agree on a contract extension, and Green Bay ended up franchise tagging him. Adams made it very clear that he wouldn't play under the tag, and despite the Packers actually reportedly offering even more money than the Raiders, Adams wanted to be traded to Las Vegas to play with his old teammate at Fresno State, Derek Carr. He was traded for a first and a second round pick. With it, Las Vegas gave him a five-year, 141.25 million dollar deal, which made him the highest paid wide out in the league at the time. Adams is gone, but he was a true staple for the Packers since they took him back in the second round in 2014. His first two seasons in the pros were pretty disappointing. He had less than 1,000 yards and just four touchdowns over the span, but then he broke out in 2016 with 997 yards and 12 touchdowns, and from there, he just got better and better every single year, and of course, was able to solidify himself as one of the best wide receivers in the league. He went for over 1,000 yards for the first time in 20. 18 with 1,386, and Adams had 13 touchdowns. In 2020, he had over 1,300 yards again, and he even led the league with 18 touchdowns. Last season, he had over 1,500 yards. Adams is a two-time All-Pro and a five-time Pro Bowler. I mean, he's just an absolute stud, and now the Packers have to replace him. The Packers certainly tried to replace him at the 2022 NFL Draft, selecting Christian Watson early in the second round. Watson redshirted his true freshman year in college at North Dakota State. The following season, he had just over 100 yards, and then he finally saw an increased role in 2019. Watson recorded 732 yards and six touchdowns. In that shortened 2020 season, because of COVID, Watson had 442 yards and a single touchdown. The best year of his collegiate career came in his redshirt senior season. 801 yards, seven touchdowns. In five years at NDSU, Watson was named All-MVFC three times and won four FCS National Championships. The Packers really need him to contribute as a rookie, and he'll likely do it alongside veteran Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins was once a fourth overall pick in 2014. He had a good first two years in the league, 982 yards as a rookie with six touchdowns. Then in 2015, Watkins had over 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns. He broke a bone in his foot the next season, and he ended up missing some time. In the offseason, Watkins was traded to the Rams with a six-rounder for EJ Gaines and a second. Watkins had almost 600 yards in his lone year in LA, and then he aimed a three-year, $48 million deal in the offseason with the Chiefs. In his three seasons in Kansas City, Watkins won a ring. He had over 400 yards every year, but he only surpassed 600 once. Then last season, he signed with the Ravens on a one-year deal. Watkins had just 394 yards and a single touchdown. Watkins signed a one-year deal with the Packers this offseason, and Green Bay really needed to bring in some bodies. I mean, they traded away at and Marquez Valdez-Scantling even left in free agency, meaning the best returner is probably Alan Lazard. Lazard went undrafted in 2018, and then he signed with the Jags. He was waived, but then he was signed to the practice squad before the Packers signed him. Lazard ended up playing in every single game in 2019. He had 477 yards and three touchdowns, and then in 2020, he had over 400 yards and three touchdowns again. Last season, he had by far the best year of his career with 513 yards and eight touchdowns. Green Bay put a tender on him as a restricted free agent this offseason, keeping him in Green Bay. I also just have to point out that somehow Randall Cobb 
is still in Green Bay. I, I don't even know how old that dude is, but it feels like he's been playing for the Packers on and off for my entire life. What's crazy is that Lazard isn't even the only undrafted guy getting important playtime in 2022. I mean, these are the guys that the Packers are relying on. And so like Lazard, tight end Robert Tunyon was undrafted. Tunyon ended up signing with the Lions in 2017, but he got released before the season. He landed on the Packers practice squad on the year, and he did get some playtime in 2018. Slowly, he got more and more time on the field. And then in 2020, he surprised a lot of people, like a lot of people. He had 586 yards and he led all tight ends with 11 touchdowns. He was a red zone machine. Unfortunately, in 2021, he tore his ACL in week eight. Tunyon ended up signing back with the Packers this offseason on a one-year deal. The good news for the wide receiver core is the Packers stud two-headed backfield should be able to take a lot of pressure off the pass game. Green Bay still has one of the better running backs in the entire league, Aaron Jones. Remember, Jones went in that stacked 2017 running back class. He was in the fifth round to Green Bay. As a rookie, Jones had 488 yards and four touchdowns. He saw an increased role in 2018, 728 yards and eight touchdowns, and he emerged as a receiving threat out of the backfield, adding 206 yards and a touchdown. Jones truly broke out in 2018. He led the league in rushing touchdowns with 18, had three more receiving, rushed for 1,084 yards, and had 474 receiving yards. In 2020, he had over 1,000 yards again on the ground and had over 300 through the air. Last season, he had about 800 rushing yards and about 400 receiving yards. Now, why did the numbers dip a bit? Well, because there's another stud back in Green Bay now, A.J. Dillon. To a lot of people's surprise, the Packers used a six-rounder on A.J. Dillon in 2020 after his time in Boston College. Now, Dillon was buried on the depth chart as a rookie behind Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. He had 242 yards and two touchdowns rushing. After Williams left in free agency, Dillon had a much bigger role last season. Splitting time with Jones, Dillon rushed for over 800 yards and five touchdowns and added 313 yards and two touchdowns downs over the air. The two are surely going to be unstoppable in 2022, and that's going to be easy to do with a really good offensive line. Most importantly, an offensive line that gets David Bakhtiari back from injury. Bakhtiari was a Packers fourth rounder in 2013. He ended up starting in every single game at left tackle as a rookie after Brian Balaga tore his ACL, and Bakhtiari was good and has been every second he's been on the field since. Bakhtiari is a five-time All-Pro and been named to the Pro three times. He signed a four-year $48 million deal and a different four-year $105.5 million deal that at the time made him the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history. Unfortunately, in late 2020, he tore his ACL and it caused him to miss almost all of the 2021 season. The Packers did draft him and I have to give Green Bay so much credit here. Not only are they going to have a good line this season, but it's going to be fully drafted by the team. The other tackle is Elgin Jenkins, who the Packers drafted in the sixth round in 2019. The two guards were both draft picks too, John Runyon, 2026 rounder, and Royce Newman, 2021 first. Plus at center is Josh Myers, who the Packers took in the second round last year. Green Bay has done a fantastic job drafting, but it's gotten them in trouble a couple times. Like when you theoretically say you draft a young quarterback, that would be the team's next quarterback, even though you have likely the best in the entire league still going Going strong. Yeah, we're we're talking about Jordan Love. To pretty much everybody's shock, the Packers used their first round pick in 2020 on Jordan Love. He didn't take a single snap as a rookie, buried on the depth chart. Love was the backup to Aaron Rodgers in 2021, and he got his first career start when Rodgers got COVID. He threw his first touchdown and an interception to go with it. Late in the year, he took over for Rodgers for a half, and he threw a touchdown, but two late interceptions and a loss. Love just creates another complex situation for the Packers. He drafted a guy with a high pick in the first round. And not only has he not gotten a lot of playtime, but he hasn't been particularly good. And at the end of the day, the Packers are going to need someone to take over for Rodgers when he does hang him up. He just signed a three-year, $150.8 million deal. But after those three seasons, what does life look like for the Packers? And more importantly, can Green Bay capture one more ring before it's all over? Because it's going to be a hell of a lot harder to do without Devontae Adams.